Today on Muscle Car, Project Limelight shows off its birthday suit. Rick fixes some minor flaws, and Tommy shows how to update an old repair. Mercifully, he doesn't show his birthday suit. Plus, this old 402 has a story to tell. A horror story. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to Muscle Car. It's not every day that you see 40-year-old sheet metal that's still in this good a condition. So you can imagine how stoked we were when we got our 1970 Camaro back from the blaster. Now this is what you hope for with a California car. I mean, look at these floorboards. These things look like they were just stamped out yesterday. Overall, we got really lucky. The hood, deck lid, and doors only have a few minor dings. The fenders are by far the worst panels. We're going to have to weld in a few patch panels and rework a previous repair, and then we can get started on the bodywork. Now, we like to think that we know cars pretty darn well around here, and after a thorough inspection of Project Limelight, she looks pretty solid. But some people will go through a lot of effort to cover up flaws, so you never really know what you got till you get her down to her birthday suit. And that's where Strip Masters comes in. These guys don't do sandblasting. They do plastic media blasting, which is a lot less invasive than sand. When you sandblast something, it does take a little bit of the metal off of the product. At the sand hitting the metal, it creates heat. Maybe sometimes warping. With this plastic media, it doesn't heat up as much. That means if you have soft parts like our Camaro grill shell here, they can be stripped without being damaged. And unlike soda blasting, it doesn't leave a residue that needs to be prepped before any primer or paint can go on. Blow it off, get all that stuff off, and you're ready to paint. Now, if we had a lot of body work to do, I'd go ahead and put primer on it now to keep all this bare metal from rusting. But honestly, <laughs> there's just not much to do on this thing. So I'm gonna buzz it down with 80 grit and knock out all the body work now, then prime the whole thing. I'll start by opening up the surface of the areas that need filler, so the repair will have a stronger bite. The plastic bead blasting doesn't remove rust, so I'll clean these small spots with the stripper wheel. Metal to metal filler is the best choice for high stress areas like the C-pillars. It's strong and stable, but hard to sand, so I'll finish it out later with standard plastic filler. Well, that area is ready to get cleaned off and have some plastic put on it. Now I'm going to straighten out some dents. There's a little crease that runs right through there, and for that, I need a stud gun. Matco's newest stud gun features a magnetic tip, so the stud won't fall out before you get it into place. Just pull the trigger, but not too long or you could warp the panel. Now I'm using studs right here because there's a wheel well right there, so I can't get at the back side of it. But you can see where this dent actually runs all the way down and ends clear down here. Where this area I can get at from inside the trunk, so no studs required. A special slide hammer comes in the kit. It locks onto the studs, allowing you to pull the metal back into shape. Just go easy and move it a little at a time, so you don't over pull and stretch the metal. Now I can move to the inside of the trunk to rough in the rest of the crease with the shaping hammer. Once it's close, I can cut the studs off and finish it all out with a hammer and dolly. Look right there where that real deep part was, it's almost completely gone. Well that's probably close enough right there, I could prime it and block it out, but filler's a lot more stable than primer, so I'll do a little skim coat first and then prime the whole thing. After the break, how to fix a common fender flaw, and later, Tommy's got the tear down blues. While Rick's filling in the rest of the dents on the body, I'm going to get started on the metal work. We're pretty sure the car was repainted in the mid 80s. Back then, this drill and slide hammer type of repair was typical at most body shops. Nowadays, most pros would use a stud gun like Rick just showed you. That doesn't mean this type of repair is wrong. A lot of you guys out there are probably still doing it this way. The stud gun method does give cleaner, faster, better results. We want the best repair possible, so I'm going to cut it out, patch in some new metal. Before I do any cutting, I need to get the shape of the surrounding metal back to where it's supposed to be. On something like a lip, you can eyeball it, but if this butted up against another panel, it would need to be in place to make sure the lines are right. I'm cutting out the old metal on the body line. This way I'll be making a flat patch instead of one with a complicated shape. 
I'll follow up the cutoff wheel with a 24 grit grinding disc to clean up the edges. The easiest way to make a patch is to use the old metal as a template. 18 gauge steel is pretty standard for body panels, so that's what I'm using for the patch. It's thin enough to be cut with a shear or snips if you don't have a bandsaw. With a patch that will be butt welded all the way around, it needs to fit very precise. This means taking off a little at a time and checking the fit a lot. I left the inside edge a little long when I cut this piece because I knew I would need some extra metal to form the new lip. Instead of using pliers, I made a simple tool out of eighth inch plate so I'd have a consistent bend all the way across this edge. And it worked perfectly. This piece fits like a glove. As I weld the patch in, I'll check the fitment as I go to make sure there's no low spots. Take your time, especially when welding in the center of a panel, and don't heat the metal up too much or it will end up warping, causing you a lot more work to fix it. Once it's welded all the way around, grind it off smooth with 24 grit. This next area is hands down the most common place to find rust, a lower fender behind the wheel. Dirt and moisture get trapped behind the inner brace and it's all downhill from there. These patch panels are available from year one for most muscle cars. They're preformed, so you just trim off what you don't need, weld them in. For now, we're only cutting out the obvious stuff. With layered panels, it's hard to know what lies underneath until you open it up. So we may end up cutting out more. Looks like we got rid of enough of the outer skin, but the inner brace will need some repair as well. So it's time for some more slicing and dicing. Just like before, the old piece is a template for the new. I'm using 16 gauge for this, cause the inner structure is a little thicker than the body panel. I'll use the brake to recreate the bend this piece needs, but a vise and a mallet would work too. Once it's trimmed and shaped to fit, you can weld it in and grind it down. Duplicolor's weld through primer will work as a barrier to keep the rust from coming back. Our panel didn't include this mounting edge, so I fabbed up a simple piece that matches what we had to cut off. I'll cut the notch out when I do the final grinding. The great thing about using a preformed panel is you don't have to spend so much time shaping it for a good fit. Coming up, got rust under glass? We'll show you how to fix it. And later our engine reveals a dirty little secret. Hey guys, welcome back. With the fenders patched and the majority of the bodywork done, there's just one more area that still needs to be repaired. These rusty corners here where the windshield meets the dash. Now we can get away with a couple of spot repairs, but classic cars are notorious for rotting out in this area. Now if you're not lucky enough to have an F body as clean as ours, Year One offers a whole panel that runs from your dash all the way up to the firewall. Before I start cutting out the bad chunks, I'm going to remove the VIN tag to keep it from being damaged. All I have to do is grind down the two rivets, punch them out, and store the tag in a safe place so we can reinstall it later. I'm planning my cuts to avoid a brace that's underneath. I only want to cut through the top layer for now. Then I can see what part of the bottom layer has to be replaced. Now here you can see on the back side of this piece, that's why I only cut it back as far as I did. The sheet metal from there on over is still good, so why chop it out? With all the rust uncovered, I'll use a strip and clean disc to get all the flakes out of the way so I can see exactly what I've got before cutting out any more metal. I'll make a simple template out of cardboard so my patch will be as accurate as possible. Now this patch is just small enough that I'm not going to bother with the bandsaw. I'll just use the snips to cut it out by hand. 
I attached a stud to help hold the patch in place, and I'll slice it off as soon as it's welded in. With the inner structure repaired, I can move on to the outer skin. Now this area is too complicated to make in one piece, so I'll break it into two patches. For a patch like this, you really don't need any fancy equipment. Snips, a hammer, and a vise will do everything you need. Now once you have a good fit, seal up the area with some weld through primer, and you can weld in the new pieces. The nice thing about doing it this way is that when you're done, you still have all the factory spot welds. No one will ever know that that's been repaired. Up next, Dr. Tom examines our 402. Oh no, that's not good. You're watching Muscle Car. For a DVD copy of this episode, just go to PowerBlockTV.com and order your copy for just $5.95 plus shipping and handling. Start your own Muscle Car collection, delivered right to your door from the PowerBlock. Hey, welcome back. Believe it or not, the sheet metal and bodywork on this thing are done. And before we know it, it's going to be ready for a new drivetrain. So while I get this thing sealed up with some primer, Tom is going to crack open our 396 to see what we got. Like we've said before, this engine is actually out of a 72 GMC, but that's okay because we're not building a numbers matching car. Any 402 block will do. And remember, starting in 70, any Chevrolet style big block sold as a 396 or 400 is actually a 402. The brackets and accessories for our Camaro are different from a truck, so we won't be reusing most of these parts, but they're still valuable, so we're going to keep everything together for the next guy to use. All these parts can be refurbished and are number stamped, so if you're doing a numbers matching restoration, hang on to every little piece. Most harmonic balancers are press fit, so have a puller ready. Our Matco set made this job easy. L78s came with a Holly, not a Q-Jet, so this one's going somewhere else. It's always a good idea to get the big chunks out of the way before you pop the intake off so nothing falls into the block. Well, I think we found a miss. A big hunk of crud in here. Yeah, this thing looks like it's cooked the cam bearing or something out in it. It's not a good sign. Now, engines may not really be able to talk, but they sure can tell a story if you know what to look for. Pay attention to each and every part as you tear it down. They could be trying to tell you something important. Well, it looks like that's where our bearing fragment came from. That piston's hitting the head. Ooh, not a good sign. Oh no, that's not good. And here comes the jelly. This thing's had some water in it. Maybe it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> Maybe a big deal. Yeah, here comes the good oil now. Yeah, that's gross. Well, from the beginning of the teardown, we've had a few signs that weren't in our favor. Push rod out of place, well, the thing may have been over revved or a lot of miles. Flakes in the lifter valley, it's not that big a deal. We planned on rebuilding it anyhow. Water in the oil pan, not a big deal either because it probably just got wet at some time. Well, then I started trying to take the oil pan off. Something on the inside wanted out in a bad kind of way. So I'm pretty sure we're gonna find some metal where it's not supposed to be. You may have been wondering why I didn't roll the motor over to take the oil pan off. Reason being is because when you're tearing the motor down you don't know nothing about, this keeps the story in the pan. So let's see what we can find. Yeah, that's not good. Oh, there's two. That looks like a rod. Man, there's some big chunks off in here. Ooh, big chunk. Yeah, right there. Broke piston. Looks like that's our problem. Like it broke the bottom out of that piston and smoked the other rod bearing. Yep, no rod bearing in sight. Looks like it's had its feelings hurt. 
<laughs> Ain't much of that thing left. Ooh. Yeah, this thing's pretty trashed. Yeah, Rick's gotta see this. We got a decision we gotta make. Hey, brother, come here a minute. Got good news and we got bad. You got a bad look on your face. Good news is that I've tore the engine down and kept your hands clean the whole time. Uh-huh. Bad news is on me. we've got two giant coolant holes inside the cylinder wall. What do you think about that? Whoa, dude. Yeah. Time to bore it and sleeve it. Yeah, I don't even know if that's repairable. Probably need to give the machine shop a call and see what they have to say. Even if they sleeve it, they're still gonna have to magnaflex it. Who knows how far the cracks go, man. Tell you what, I'll check around and see what else I can come up with. All right, brother. Well, I carried our block down to the machine shop and I got some good news. Our busted cylinder can be sleeved and it's only gonna cost a little over a hundred bucks more than we we're gonna spend anyways. So that means we're right on track. Now all our metal work is done and the body and most of the panels are in first prime and really looking nice. If you guys have any questions about product used on the show, you can check it out at powerblocktv.com. Now we're gonna get all this stuff blocked out in final prime, then we'll be ready to swap out the suspension, brakes, and rear end. But for this week, we're out of time. So until next time, we're out of here.